Well, good morning, and welcome to another video. Now, a few weeks back when we had the heat pump installed, a few of you asked about the Shelly monitor that I installed into the consumer panel for the heat pump to validate what the readings that I was getting from the Daikin app. Well, today we're gonna to actually have a look at that Shelly monitor. We're gonna take the front off the fuse panel. I'm gonna show you how it's installed. Then we're gonna go back to the office and I'm gonna show you how to set up a Shelly device. Now it doesn't matter what Shelly device you have, they all pretty much follow the same procedure. And there are a couple of little gotchas along the way. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then stay tuned and we'll get into it. So as you can see, since our last video, um, we finished up all the brickwork around the heat pump. It now looks quite nice and neat, doesn't quite catch as many leaves, and we haven't had any problems with water getting outside of the soak away and onto the brickwork, which is important when we go into the winter because what we don't want is any ice around the heat pump. Now before we start, if you're not comfortable working on electrical systems, then please do consult a qualified electrician before you try to do anything yourself. Now what I'm going to do today is I'm going to pop the cover off of this and I'm going to let you see what's inside how the Shelly monitor is set up. We're not going to make any changes to it because it's working perfectly right now, but I want to show you how we've configured it inside. So the first thing to do is let's get the cover off. So here's the Shelly device itself. It's actually powered off of this breaker here. This is supplying power to both the D2 pump that's upstairs and also to the Shelly device itself. Now all the white wires, you can see those, those are the two CT clamps. So they run around and clamp on to the cables that are coming out of the top of these two breakers. So they're able to monitor the power that is going up and down to the heat pump. Now, as I say, if you're not comfortable being in a board like this, then please consult a qualified electrician. It's quite fiddly to get all the cables routed in there. Much as I'm capable of doing this myself, I did actually have a qualified electrician come out to install these. They installed a few more around the house, and we'll go take a look at one of those now. This is my main panel in the house, and you can see over there on the left-hand side that we have a slightly different type of Shelly energy monitor. This is the Shelly 3EM. This device can monitor three different circuits, either three individual ones on a single phase supply or three separate phases on a three phase supply. In my case, I have it monitoring my oven, the house sockets in both the front and the rear of the house. I'm not gonna take the cover off this board as I would need to isolate it. I don't want to shut down the entire house. However, I do have a photograph which I'll pop up on the screen now. Now we've seen both types of monitor, let's head back to the office and we can look at how they're set up. Well, welcome back inside. It's a little warmer in here than it is out there. What I'm gonna show you today is how to install a Shelly device. Now, obviously the ones that I've got installed into my fuse boards, they're already up and working. Um, we'll run through the app. I'll show you some of the settings in there. So today we're going to install this. This is a Shelly Plug UK edition. Obviously being in the UK, a UK edition plug is a good thing to have. Now, now I have a number of these devices in my house. I have some Shelly flood sensors in the bathroom to make sure nobody's flooding those. Uh, we have one under our kitchen sink to detect leaks. We have the EMs in the boards and we have a few of these Shelly plugs around the house as well. Now the installation process, that they detail in the manual, and the manual is on a tiny bit of paper with microfine print on it, isn't the way I would go about installing them. And this is just down to me having installed a number of different devices and their process or the recommended way of doing it doesn't work very well. But I'm gonna show you a way today that works every single time. Let me just start by saying this is not a sponsored video. I purchased all of these Shelly products with my own money. Now, this is not my first smart plug. Um, in fact, I have some 
uh, Eve plugs and some EcoFlow smart plugs in my house as well. Um, the Eve ones, I've had a hit and miss relationship with them. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. The matter ones are a little bit better, but their biggest problem is just their physical size. They take up too much space, and if you're in a double socket, they generally block the item that's in the socket next to it. The EcoFlow ones, I absolutely love them. They are the perfect size, they work every single time. The only downside to these is they are matter compatible, but they don't present any energy data into Home Assistant, which is my platform of choice. So that is why we're talking about this product today. This is the Shelly Plug UK. So let's open it up and we'll take a look at what we get in the box. So there's the plug itself, a cardboard box. We don't need that anymore. Uh, the instructions, they tend to follow the, uh, what I call the Sony version of instructions where you have just have one piece of paper that folds out and we use very small print and you've got to find the right language. And so obviously here's the UK instructions there. Now the way that they recommend you install these is through the Shelly app. No, thank you Shelly, I don't want any more Black Friday deals, I've spent more than enough money. As you can see here, um, we have a couple of Shelly flood sensors. We have our office computer plug, which is down there in the wall. We have our Shelly 3EM in the main fuse board. And we actually have two uh, EM50s, one in the garage and the one you just saw connected to the heat pump at the side of the house. The way that Shelly would recommend you install this is by using the Shelly app, clicking on add and having it search for the device. I found this to be unreliable. The simplest way to do this is to plug your device in. Now, obviously this is a plug-in device, but if you're installing the EMs into your power board, they will be powered up and they come up in a mode where they're searching for a device to connect to. Now, the way we're gonna to connect to this is through our Wi-Fi networks. So this will be broadcasting a Wi-Fi ID in a moment and we'll give it a few seconds. A few moments later. There we go. So we've now got our Shelly Plugs UK with the serial number. We're gonna connect our phone directly to that device. Now this can take a few seconds depending on what's going on in your area. You see we get the little tick. Now we're gonna open up a web browser and we're gonna to go to 192.168.33.1. Doesn't matter what Shelly device you're, you're installing, that's gonna be the IP address that you're gonna to wanna to go to. And immediately you'll see we're now connected to the plug uh, through its own web interface. Now, once we've connected, the first thing we wanna do is obviously get it onto our network. So we go into the settings, we'll go to Wi-Fi, and we will say enable Wi-Fi network, and it will ask us what network we wanna to connect to. Now it's immediately found my network, now I'm just gonna type in my password. I'm gonna lift it up so you can't see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna click Save Settings. Now you'll notice the plug went red, that everything uh, just flashed on the screen immediately. That's telling me that it's now no, no, now no longer connected to the device. So we can come out of there. Now here's the difficult piece. We now need to find that device's IP address. Now, once it's connected, go back to your normal Wi-Fi and look in your router or router, if you're from the US, for the new device. And there you can see we have Shelly Plugs UK, it's online, and its address is 192.168.5.221. We're going to go back to our web browser. and we're now connected back to the device. So this is where you can set the device up now, you can make sure it's on the right firmware. So again, if we can go to settings, we can take a look down, see what options we've got available to us. We can go to firmware. It's now checking the firmware version. We're using version 1.0, update to the stable version. And it will take a few seconds, it will download the new firmware, and it will make sure that this is all up and running.
Now we're just quickly rebooting the plug. The device has come back online and we're ready to go. Now obviously you, in here there are lots of settings, you can give the plug names, uh, you can do all sorts of things with it. But at this point you want to go back to the Shelly app. And let's say we're going to add a device and we're just going to scan the network for it. And it's immediately found my Shelly plug. I want to add the device, I want to give it a name, and we will call this Heat Pump 2. Now I've been keeping a little secret from you. We actually have two heat pumps in our house. I'm going to use this plug in a video coming up in a few weeks' time where we'll actually use it to monitor the second heat pump that we have and how much energy that's going to be using. That's all I'm going to say on that topic for a moment. So we've given it a name. We're going to add it to a room. We're going to say it's in the kitchen. And it's now going to associate that device with my account. There we go. And now the pending connection is the connection with the Shelly cloud. That sometimes takes more than the few seconds that it did there. But you'll see in our kitchen, we now have a flood sensor and we have the heat pump two plug. And if I turn that on, you'll notice we get a little green light there. That lets me know I'm remotely controlling that plug. Now, again, we can go into the individual device. There's obviously not going to be any consumption on this device. But if I go back to all of my rooms, Go to the side of the house, pick the heat pump. This is where you can start to see consumption over a period of time. So if we ch check the little graph, it will always show you the current period versus the previous period. So instead of last 24 hours, let's look at today. So you can see that the monitor here, it gives me the blue graph. So today we've used 9.42 kilowatt hours of power, um, averaging about 628 watt hours of power. Maximum we've drawn 1.88 kilowatt hours, and the minimum was 10.9 watt hours. Now, all the Shelly devices follow this format. So again, if I take a different uh, device, go back to all rooms, go to my office. As I say, I have another one of these plugs that is connected to the UPS that is, runs my computer. So again, I can do exactly the same thing. You'll notice I have exactly the same charts and graphs for a plug as I do for the EM device. So again, if I look at the usage today, the UPS has drawn 1.01 kilowatt hours, um, averaging about 67 watt hours. So that's it. That's how you configure Shelly devices. It doesn't matter if it's a plug like this, it's the Shelly EM in your fuse board, or a flood sensor that sits underneath your sink. They all work in exactly the same way. So obviously the last thing to do is to add the plug to Home Assistant. So here I am in my Home Assistant instance. I'm going to select Settings and Devices and Services. And the first thing you'll notice here is that the Shelly plug is automatically discovered. So we're just going to click Add. Obviously, do we want to add this device? Yes, we do. Where's it going to be? We're going to put that in the kitchen and finish. And that's now added the device to Home Assistant. So if we scroll down in our instance here to Shelly, we'll head in here to seven devices. And you can see here we have our Shelly plug. We'll probably want to change its name. So we will call this Shelly plug. We'll just call it Shelly plug for now. Update and we'll rename the entities. Now, obviously haven't got anything plugged into it right now, but this is where you would see how much power it's using um, in an instant and then how much energy it's drawn over the course of a day. You can, of course, create a helper that would reset this every 24 hours if you want to see a day-by-day -day instance. As I said earlier in the video, please make sure if you're doing anything inside your fuse boards that you get a qualified electrician to do it. You may be able to do it yourself, but you should still get a qualified electrician to check your work and make sure that there are not going to be any issues in the future. So I'm going to sign off because this guy's going to want to go for a walk in a minute. I hope you found this useful. If you have, please do hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps me grow the channel. And if I'm lucky, I'll see you back here real soon for another video. Take care. Bye-bye.